Hello friends, this video on organic chemistry basic part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before we start the whole chapter of organic chemistry, let's start with the tetra covalency of carbon. And this is the reason why we have so many carbon compounds, so many carbon compounds that we have a special branch of science called organic chemistry because carbon has a good property to concatenate, they form big chains and it's all because of tetra valency of carbon. See the atomic number of carbon is what? The atomic number of carbon is what? 6. So if you see the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So in the normal state, let me write the, the normal state, the electronic configuration will be 1s2. 2s2, 2px will have 1, 2py will have 1 and 2pz will be empty, correct, busy, that is how it is. In the excited state what will happen is, we have learned about these things in the previous chapters. So this one electron from here will go to p orbit, so it will become 1s2, 2s1, 2px1. 2py1 and 2pz1. So if you see there are four empty orbits. So the valence cell has, has four elements or electrons. Correct. Now since valence cell has four electrons and the noble gas uh, configuration it is it, it should have eight electrons so you can either I mean to attain to attain stability it can either gain four electron or it can either lose four electron correct but it requires huge energy to either gain or lose four electron because right, four electron is not a joke. For example, sodium has one extra electron. It can easily give one electron. So giving or chlorine, if you see, chlorine needs one electron. Chlorine has a valence electron seven. So chlorine can easily take one electron, and sodium can easily give one electron. But exchange of four electrons is not not a joke. It requires huge, huge, huge energy. Correct. So it is. This is not possible actually to gain or lose four electron. So this is not possible, this is not possible. So what is the third option? The third option is the sharing of electron. Correct? Sharing is possible. Maybe one from this guy, one from this guy, one from this guy, that is possible. Right? But actually gaining and losing is not possible. And since gaining and losing involves ionic bond, since this is not possible, so in case of carbon, we will not have ionic bond. But sharing is possible, so we'll have covalent. But again, if you see, right, as I have told, the bonds are generally not pure covalent or pure ionic, right? If it, even if it is covalent bond, it will have slight ionic character. And that all depends on the electronegativity difference, right? Uh, if the electronegativity difference is 2.5 or more, 2.5 or more, it is generally ionic. But in case of most of this organic chemistry, you will see it is covalent only. If you see the electronegativity of carbon is what? 2.5. This is the electronegativity of carbon. So if you write the electronegativity of the compounds, let me write here. For example, hydrogen, it is 2.1. For example, oxygen, it is 3.5. For nitrogen, it is 3.0. For chlorine, it is 3.0. For sulfur, it is 2.5. So, if you see most of the case, I'm, when I talk about a carbon compound, organic compounds, carbon forms bond with oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine, all these only, right? So, if you see the electronegativity difference is not much. For car carbon hydrogen, if you see 2.5 minus 2.1, that is 0.4. Carbon oxygen also, if you see difference is 2.5 minus 3.5, that is 1. Carbon nitrogen also if you see 2.5 minus 3 that is 0.5. Carbon chlorine also if you see it is 2.5 minus 3 that is 0.5. 
carbon sulfur 2.5 minus 2.5 almost zero so since the carbon compounds organic compound we have is generally formed of hy carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur chlorine and the electronegative difference is not that much so if you see most of them are covalent compound only most of them are correct so why this is covalent compound you can understand this from the electronegativity negativity difference point of view also the electronegativity difference is not that much so they are covalent also you can say that since it has four electrons in the valence cell it is very difficult to gain or lose four electrons so it will not form ionic bond but can share four electrons easily maybe one from this guy one from this guy one from this guy one from this guy so it will have a happy stable structure right so it has generally covalent bond formation Let's talk about the hybridization carbon now. So carbon has three kinds of hybridization, sp3 hybridization, sp2 and sp. All these three kinds of hybridization is shown by carbon. Let's take the example of sp3 hybridization. The example of methane. So let's see this hybridization here. This is sp3 hybridization. So if you see the carbon in the normal state has electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p. Right, so 2s2 and 2p2. So, what will happen is one electron will go from 2s2 to 2p. This becomes 1s2, 2s1, and 2p3. So, if you see, this is how this is the normal state where if you see it has uh, 2s2, this is 2s2, and this is 2p2. Right, this is 2p orbital, px, py. Correct, so two electrons in the p orbital and two in the 2s orbitals. I am talking only about these now. This is, I think, is somewhere there, but I have removed it for simplicity purpose. Now, if you see, this is the electronic configuration in the excited state. What will happen is one electron went to this. Now, if you see, what happens? Everything is sp3 hybridized, right? So everything is sp3 hybridized. That means you get four orbitals. So you got one, two, three, four, right? Because sp3 that means you need s one and p three. That is four orbitals. So you got four orbitals. Now what will happen is this will get sp3 hybridized. You see this guy will get sp3 hybridized. And this happens when hydrogen approaches near this carbon. So if you see this becomes sp3 hybridized and each of these has three electrons, uh, one electron. So if you see one electron here, one electron here, one electron here, one electron here. And the other three, four veins are from four hydrogens. This is how it is. Hope you understand. And we have covered this in the other chapter also where we talked about the structures of uh, various uh, atoms. Yeah, then we talked about the Vesper theory. We have covered this part. So if you see what happened is this carbon when the hydrogen approach it became sp3 hybridized and sp3 hybridized looks like this with four orbitals. Each orbitals has one electron and then it formed a bond and it got CH4 methane. You see this is the structure of the uh, methane. This is the structure now. Tetrahedra. The other kind of hybridization that is shown by carbon is ethene is sp2. We will take the example ethene. So if you see here, the here also if you see in the normal state it has 2s2 and 2p2. Right? This is the electronic configuration in the normal state. So if you see this is 2s2 and this is 2p2, normal state of carbon. Now here what happens is one electron moves. But in this, instead of forming four sp3 orbitals, it will form three sp2 orbitals. So if you see sp2, that means 1s and 2p, right? So it will form three sp2 orbitals and one 2p empty orbitals. So if you see, the moment hydrogen will approach, this, this uh, structure will change into sp2 orbitals. If you see, the moment hydrogen is approaching, what is happening is, this is happening. So if you see what happened is, this is my sp2 this is my sp2 this is my sp2 and this is my 2p orbital similarly here also if you see this is my 2p orbital this is my sp2 this is my sp2 and this is also my sp2 hope you understand what happened here so here it formed three sp2 orbital and one p orbital and then if you see the carbon is hydrogen is merged and if you see these p orbitals if you see right here they form a double bond because they combine like this right they combine like this to form a 
double bond. And if you see this is the structure here, there's a double bond here. Why? Because these p orbitals they overlap to form a pi bond. And thus, if you see here, we have sp2 hybridization. Similarly, carbon also shows sp hybridization. You'll see one more example with this. So if you see the normal electronic configuration is this 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This is the normal electronic configuration we have. Now what happens is this is the the same one exactly if you see 2s2, 2p2, 2s2 here in the uh, spherical one and 2p2 electrons. Now if you see one electron went here and now instead of forming sp2 it forms two sp orbitals you see and two mpp orbitals. The moment hydrogen will approach if you see here what happens is it forms two sp orbital and for example if you see this is my sp orbital and this is the sp orbital. Two sp orbital here in this and here it forms my 2p orbital and 2p orbital. So if you see this is my 2p orbital, this is my 2p orbital and this is my sp orbital, this is my sp orbital. Right, so we have two sp orbital and two 2p orbital. Similarly, here also if you see, this is my sp orbital, this is my sp orbital, this is my 2p, and this is my 2p orbital. Correct. So I have two sp and two 2p orbital. Now, if you see, hydrogen comes here, and now if you see, these guys form bond because if you see, these guys form one bond here, right, and these guys form another bond here. So there is a triple bond. Correct. So that's why if you see the structure, it has a triple bond structure. So what we have seen, carbon forms sp, sp2 and sp3 hybridization. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.